All right, uh, let's move on to just the last sort of segment of today. Just give me one player that you are genuinely concerned about who may seem like a buy low, but in actual fact, you just want to stay well away from. Some red flags, perhaps. Um, here's a red flag. I stayed well away from in the draft just because um, it's a player from the Atlanta Hawks who is just, it's a, such a deep team. But um, Danilo yeah. Gallinari, yeah. he is not playing well right now. He is injured. He's had injury concerns in the history. Um, I don't know, maybe you'll correct me and say it's COVID again. It could be. (laughs) I think he um, actually is injured this time. (laughs) Okay, he actually is injured. There you go. Um, 196 is what his current rank is on Yahoo. Um, In the preseason, he was in the 80 range. Um, I think it was drafted around that in our draft as well. Um, Usually he was good in points and three throws, but now he's playing on that deep roster. He's only put up 13 minutes a game, which is um, very, very bad. Um, once again, okay. this is such a deep roster. Maybe he does get a bit more minutes in the future if, if there are some more injuries. But right now, he's looking like a definite bust. Yeah, I, look, in the first game, he played 24 minutes and then got injured. Uh, I think it was at very, the very end of the game. So I don't think he would have played much more than that. Then he came back, played three minutes, got injured. So the 13 minutes, it's it's not... He's going to play more than that. But in saying that, he's a backup. He's a clear backup. He's not going to be the Danilo Gallinari we've seen in the past putting up 20 points a game, getting all those juicy free throws, um, shooting at 90%. Um, he's just, and yeah, he's not going to get any steals or blocks or assists. He's not going to get any rebounds. Like he's literally just going to be, when he comes back, potentially at best case scenario, like a three point streamer. And there's a million of those on the way. You could have picked up Patty Mills the other day and got eight threes. Um, so you could just definitely move on from him. I would not be buying low. If he's on your wire, I wouldn't even pick him up. If he, while he's still injured, just wait, see how he comes back and, and go from there. I wouldn't lose sleep over Gallinari on the, on the waiver wire. So uh, he was on my list too. So good, good pick. Um, I'm going to throw another one out there. LaMarcus Aldridge is my red flag player. And I hate to say this because he is on my dynasty team. I got him very late. Um, but he is 35 years old, turning, turning 36, I think at some point next year or this year, sorry. Um, he's missed a few games with knee soreness whilst that's not like a proper injury it is concerning <laughs> it, it is, doesn't uh, sound good it's, it's no, never a good one to see no he, he played today so there's a good sign so my, what, what my strategy would be and this is going to be my strategy I uh, hope I don't hope people in my dynasty league don't listen to this <laughs> but um, get a few games under his belt hopefully he starts to look a bit better as soon as you can see if you can trade him for someone who is not looking like they can't run anymore or play <laughs> play NBA speed. So um, I, I don't know. I think I think his days of being the focal point on offense or being a consistent fantasy player are coming quickly to an end. Um, yeah, I just think he's he's getting to the point where he's he's just going to be aging out of the NBA. Uh, what do you think about uh, Lamarcus Aldridge? Yeah, I think you're right. I think any kind of up tempo, fast paced team, which is a lot of the teams out there these days. Yeah. Um, Lamarcus isn't going to really be able to defend too well. Um, he's definitely a center now. There's no way you're going to have a lot of a, a tough time playing him at the at the four. Um, he's, he has noticeably slowed down. Um, I, I still think he'll have some bright sparks. He'll have the 20 point games because offensively he's still got such a nice mid range. He, he can yeah. heat up from there. Um, he's so big and tall that he, it can be hard to defend. So there is always the upside on on that side. But yeah. Um, I definitely think this is probably the downfall of Lamarcus in, in 2021. I think this is his way out. Maybe even go into a bench role next season. This season will probably still maintain the starter yeah, role, but I think, I, I think he he will become that bench role probably next season, and um, so, it'll yeah, slowly. It, it's also it's also his last. It's his contract year, so it's his last year on the Spurs. Potentially, he may even get moved to the trade deadline, um, and could even be in a bench role as early as this year on a different team. Perhaps uh, that's definitely a possibility. Uh, it may not happen. He may be a start of the, the whole season. So I would just be trying to get value as soon as I can, as soon as like, uh, by no means do you drop him. I don't think he's a droppable player. You see how it goes and, and you sort of wait it out. Um, but if he puts together a few good games, I would use that to capitalize and, and try to get as much trade value as he possibly could uh, and just sleep better at night <laughs> than worrying about Lamarck's or his knees. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, well that will, that'll do us for today, Cal. Lovely chatting with you, mate. And always fun to talk fantasy hoops. Again, if you want to check us out on Twitter, follow us at uh, the Ball Boys NBA on Twitter. 
Um, subscribe to YouTube if you haven't done already and uh, give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And until next time, we'll catch you later. Bye. Stopped. Stop. I'm going to stop this recording too.